Today's podcast episode is sponsored by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. And if you'll go over and check them out, they are the number one electronic health record system for counselors and therapists. They will provide everything you need to make your practice run smoothly and efficiently. And go check them out, therapynotes.com. And if you'll use the coupon code GORDON, just G-O-R-D-O-N, you can get your first two months free, therapynotes.com. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. This is session number 134 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad you've joined me for the podcast. If this is your first time listening in, welcome. Glad you found us. Hope you'll find the podcast helpful for you in your private practice journey. And if you're coming back for more, I'm so glad you're back. So glad you're with me. So, so how are you doing out there? How are you doing with all the huge changes that we're going through? Um, you know, um, the last few months have just been, um, wow, just really kind of overwhelming. I think for so many of us and so many different levels, and I just hope that you're taking care of yourself. I hope that you're surrounding yourself with the people that mean the most to you and that you're, um, you know, doing that self-care that a lot of times as therapists and counselors, we don't necessarily do for ourselves. Um, yeah, so um, I know for me and just in my own practice, it's just this has been just a weird time, and just uh, all of the all of the things that we're dealing with, uh, not only with um, being able to navigate the whole COVID nineteen crisis and pandemic, but the um, the uh, I'll go out on a limb, maybe not go out on a limb, but just say all of the great changes that are occurring around the Black Lives Matter movement and um, what I'm learning as as a you know as a human being as a as a white male uh, of just my own um, um, understanding of racism and and what it means to fight against racism. So, and I hope you're experiencing the same thing too. I. I think we're, uh, it's going to be interesting. I was just thinking about this this morning when I was getting ready for the day. I was just thinking, okay, what, you know, as we look back at 2020, as we go through, move through history, what we will refer to this time as, um, because it's just a, a just, um, it, you know, just huge change occurring just all the way around on so many different fronts. And it's going to be interesting to see what, how we speak of this to our grandchildren and those that come after us. And, um, you know, I'm just, um, I'm, you know, in, in many ways kind of grateful that I'm part of this time of huge change that's going on in our world. And, um, I'm hoping that, um, Hope that you feel that way too. I hope that uh, together we can make a difference and really create, um, bring bring us together rather than continue to divide us uh, throughout throughout the world. So, didn't let me get to, too far off on that uh, tangent there, but it was on my mind, and I just thought I would share it with everyone. So, in this episode, I'm I'm taking a you know uh, again a little bit of a departure from what I normally do. Uh, not too much. I'm really uh, kind of wanted to to address some things that have come up in the Facebook group that I started. And uh, the Facebook group is called G Suite for Therapists. And you've heard me mention it on some previous episodes, but oh my gosh, that group has just caught on fire. It's just crazy. The number of members, it's, it's over 2000 members now, folks. I just cannot believe that. And it just happened overnight. I mean, it was just, it seems like just a few weeks ago, I checked it and it was like 700 members, but now there's over 2000. That is just crazy. And so I'm so grateful to those of you out there listening that have 
that have joined that group and are just asking some of the greatest questions and people are helping each other out. And uh, I'm grateful to my friend Ed Dara, who was on last week's podcast, who's helping helping me to kind of moderate things within that group um, and just people really getting curious about G suite and how they can use it in their practices and understanding the other thing that people I think are learning is better understanding of HIPAA um, and just what all that means in terms of, you know, encryption and all the, the tech stuff that none of us learn in graduate school. And I know for me, um, all of this stuff, I know even I was just thinking back again, um, you know, graduate school, I never really learned how to write a, a progress note or session note. Um, it was something I learned later when I went to work for an agency and had to learn about clinical documentation. Um, you know, and of course I'm, uh, you know, the program was much different back in my day, uh, than what it is now. And hopefully they're covering those things, but just so many different things just that we have to be aware of in this electronic age and just understanding those kinds of things. And, and it really affects how we, how we manage our practice. And so in this episode, um, I'm covering, uh, what I'm referring to is just systems, processes, G Suite and HIPAA, uh, just those, those topics. And so, um, I just want to kind of share with you a little bit of my knowledge about it. Again, I'm not necessarily an expert or consider myself that much of an expert on it. Um, more of, as I like to refer to it, using my friend David Hall's expression, more of a maven of all of those things, but I've taught my things my, myself a lot about it. And so in this, uh, this episode, I want to share those things with you and just some thoughts around that and hopefully give you some resources that you can be again to think about in running your practice and helping you run it more efficiently and just thinking about how all the pieces fit together on the back end of running a practice. Um, one thing I do want to mention just uh, through the through the month of June, and this is really kind of following the same theme around G Suite and just some, you know, just so many people interested in G Suite and just how they can use it in their practice. I do have the course out there, still have it out there, G Suite for Therapists. And uh, there have been so many people that have enrolled in that. And um, yeah, again, I'm sometimes just kind of surprised at how many people have enrolled. Uh, but during the month of June 2020 in this month, uh, you can I'm letting folks have that for 20 percent off the regular price. And if you will use the coupon code, just simply June 2020 um, through the month of June, you can get it for 20 percent off again. Just uh, just a way of kind of a little small way of saying thanks for uh, being with me on this journey and just helping people with their interest in that. And in that course, I go into a lot of detail about how to use the different tools of Google G Suite uh, within your practice. And uh, for those of you that are still curious about G Suite, keep listening to the episode. I explain it in more t detail about what it is and why you might be interested in it, my, why you might want to use it. Um, and so you can get to that by going to session, uh, excuse me, practiceoftherapy.com slash G Suite course. That'll get you to uh, the the landing page for G Suite. Um, the other, the other thing, the tool that I've developed in conjunction with G Suite is the session note helper. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that, but I do have that available. And, um, it's just an, it's a, it's a system I put together using some templates from Google forms and Google docs, and then using an add on called form publisher, uh, as a system for being able to quickly write session notes and progress notes by just checking off some things on a Google form. And then it spits out a narrative after you check things off. And so uh, that you can edit and then uh, tweak as you need to. So you can get to that at just session note helper.com. So um, anyway, during the month of June, um, you can get the course at 20% off. Uh, session note helpers there as always. Um, and the updated version, I just updated it, uh, um, uh, a couple of months ago, just, uh, was switching back to the form publisher add on with that. So anyway, 
Um, that's what's going on on those two fronts. Um, so without uh, further ado, let's jump into talking about uh, systems, processes, G Suite, and HIPAA. So one of the terms or one of the phrases, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, that gets thrown out around a lot in private practice is the importance of having systems and processes in place. And so in, in this particular episode, I wanted to kind of do maybe a little bit of a deeper dive into that. I know um, a lot of times I get questions, particularly in my in the Facebook group, the G Suite for Therapists Facebook group just about how people are using the different tools and have their, um, you know, their practices set up. So first of all, I think it might be helpful to just kind of define and not maybe assume uh, that people understand what we mean uh, when, when I say systems and processes. You know, from the time that you receive a call from a potential client until they're actually sitting sitting in a chair in front of you or in your practice, there are several things that have to be done. And I tend to think of those are the systems and processes of what happens from the time you receive a call from a client until the time you discharge them, what happens over that that course of of treatment over the course of them uh, being with you as a client, particularly on the back end in terms of the um, the clinical documentation, the administrative functions, and and that sort of thing. So, so for example, when you get a new client, you're going to probably give them some sort of paperwork or forms to sign. You know that's standard, and we de- definitely need to do that. You know, just legally and ethically, have them um, sign forms, consents for treatment, understand. Uh, their HIPAA privacy policy, um, understand about their fees that they're going to be paid, you know, risk involved in doing therapy. And now, particularly with us doing a lot of teletherapy, is them understanding the risk around doing teletherapy. And then for those of us with insurance that are insurance based in our practices, we've got that whole moving piece as well as far as, uh, you know, checking benefits for their insurance and then filing the claims. All of those things, uh, obviously, there are a lot of moving parts there uh, that are occurring in a practice. And so when I say systems and processes, that's what I'm referring to are all of those things that really kind of occur outside the therapy room in terms of documentation, uh, administrative functions, all of those kinds of things. And one of the things in in private practice, particularly for those of us that started out as solo practitioners and those that are starting out as solo practitioners, all of those things can be a bit overwhelming, particularly in the beginning beginning phases of a practice. Um, and I think for a lot of people, they're not really sure how to pull all that together. Uh, the good news and bad news about all of that is is that there the good news is is that there's no um, there's no exact right way of doing all of that. I think you have to find what works best for you in your practice and how you prefer to do that. And uh, the other good news is is that uh, there is um, there are so many resources and so many products and applications and that sort of thing out there uh, that you've got a lot to choose from. And I guess that's maybe the b- bad news is that there's there's too much stuff to choose from a lot of times. And so it can be overwhelming. But in, in this particular episode, I want to maybe kind of break some of this down for you and and really talk about some things you need to understand, particularly around HIPAA. Um, understanding um, maybe some places to look for figuring out what are the best tools for you to use in your practice. And I think for those of us even that have been in practice a while, uh, I think that our change looking at our systems and processes is something that's um, 
uh, at least I know for me, is constantly being tweaked and changed and and updated as we move along in our practice. And, you know, I think all of us, uh, you know, regardless of the size of your practice or whether you're a solo practitioner or whatever, you really want that those things to be um, to just run smoothly, not to have a lot of um, things that you have to put a lot of your attention into. Because I know when I first went into private practice um, and I was doing it all myself, I was returning the phone calls, I was filing the insurance claims, all of those things. And when you're small and don't have a whole a whole lot of clients to see, you've got the time to do that. So probably in those early stages, it's a good idea to maybe bootstrap and learn some of those things just to kind of understand how it works. But one of the things I figured out is my practice started getting full and I started, my schedule started filling up to have to return phone calls, to have to file insurance claims, to um, follow up with emails, uh, send out um uh, uh, intake packets, all of those things were just a very co- time consuming thing. And so being able to automate that or even outsource that to some degree or to a, a full degree even um, is an important step to be able to make. So here wanted to just, uh, again, as I'm, again, I'm repeating myself, but I want to do kind of a deep dive into some of this to really kind of get give you some things to to think about and maybe some things to consider. So the first thing that I think is helpful for me, um, at least as I think about this, is to really kind of divide things into what I think of as clinical um, clinical functions versus administrative functions. And so what I, the, the way I kind of divide that out, at least in my mind, is that the clinical side of running a private practice would include things like individual patient records or client records. Um, So you've got your progress notes and session notes, your treatment plans, your discharge plans, all of that kind of documentation that we keep for our patients. And then also just the, you know, the consent forms, you know, all of that, all of those things would really be contained in an individual client file or individual patient folder, that sort of thing. And so those are the clinical functions. And that's the stuff that we really have to focus on keeping protected and confidential. And it's commonly referred to as PHI or personal health information. And so that's where HIPAA comes in around those particular things. Now, here, here's the thing about HIPAA, and I'm going to have some links here in the show notes and show summaries to some some former blog posts that I did. One was just, is just titled HIPAA Anxiety in Private Practice, and the other one is uh, I'll, I'll share with you here later are just some Google hacks and tips, tip sheet, um, and, and I'll get to Google G Suite here in a minute and explain that. So with HIPAA, the one thing you have to remember is what does HIPAA stand for? And it stands for the health insurance, it stands for the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. And so it was a law that was in, uh, enacted back in the 90s, uh, in 1996, just around how hospitals and personal uh, health information was handled for people, hospitals and medical records and all of that sort of thing. And and I think one of the things that we kind of forget is, I think for a lot of us in private practice or just in, you know, in the mental health fields or the helping fields, HIPAA has kind of come come to stand for us, this big brother that's out to get you if you don't handle things properly. And so I'd like for you to maybe invite you to kind of get away from thinking about it that way. You know, HIPAA, HIPAA also, and one of the key things in that is the insurance portion of that acronym. And it really applies primarily to how insurance claims are filed and how information is passed um, between um, a provider and uh, a patient um, and how all of that is kept secure. So um, again, I want to refer you to the HIPAA 
anxiety blog post that I did and take a look at that. Um, because I think a lot of times we can make HIPAA much more complicated than it is. Now, certainly, and this is something we know as, as counselors and therapists, is that we have to keep client information and pri- you know, patient information confidential. We do a good job of that. And so this just applies to how you do that, kind of some standards around that on the electronic health record side of things. If you um, if you want to keep paper records, which there's nothing wrong with that, um, then HIPAA really doesn't apply other than you just have to keep it under a double lock. Um, so if you're keeping, you know, I think, uh, one of the problems about paper records are doing it kind of old school way, uh, analog paper records is that, um, you quickly can run out of space. I know that's what I ran into because when I first started my practice, I just kept it all, had individual file folders for my, um, m- for my clients. I had a, a locked file cabinet and I kept it in a locked office. So I met the HIPAA standards on that. But, you know, once you start getting a lot of clients, um, you, that paper can out add up plus the fact that it's not environmentally friendly. So I've moved to a pretty much paperless office now and any any documents we get, we either scan them and convert them or we um, whatever and put them into a electronic health record system um, and also our Google Drive, which is HIPAA secure. So and I'll get to more on that here in a minute. So anyway, educate yourself on HIPAA. Um, understanding that I know in the in the Facebook group, the G Suite for Therapists Facebook group, there's been a lot of um, discussion in there about emails and about what is required for emails in terms of uh, in terms of HIPAA. And I think um, one of the things that we know is that it's better to have an encrypted email. But one of the, the other thing that HIPAA is a little bit more lenient on is that they recognize that in communicating with patients or with clients, we need to make that an easier process than a lot of times we make it for people. So, you know, you can certainly get a lot of encryption add-ons and that sort of thing, Uh, something like hush mail, those kinds of things do a high level of encryption. But I'm not so sure um, uh, that we necessarily have to go to those lengths in order to be HIPAA secure. And also there is a, um, there's a great article from my friend Roy Huggins over at Person Centered Tech. I'm going to put a link to here in the show notes that explains kind of the tech side of this, um, in terms of communicating with clients, uh, on the HIPAA side. So, um, the, the other thing about, um, that I'll just say real quickly, I, I know I've kind of gotten off on a tangent here just about particularly around, email, but it's one of those systems and processes that we use in our practices. I I make it a policy within my practice that the only thing that I'm going to communicate with a client by email is just something around appointment times and changing appointments and sending out initial uh, paperwork. Um, I'm not going to use email as a way to address clinical issues as I would in a session. So um, in that sense, you're keeping things a little more private. Um, you know, I know there are some therapists that do like email therapy or they do, uh, you know, send emails to people uh, in, in terms of correspondence. Um, you know, there's also people that do text therapy in terms of texting with clients and that sort of thing. Um, and, and I think when you do those types of things where you're really getting into detail around clinical ip- uh, issues, you need a higher level of encryption. But um, Gmail, um, at least my understanding of it, uh, provides the level of encryption, uh, particularly the if you're using the HIPAA compliant version of Gmail, which is G Suite. Um, it, uh, it has, if you set it up correctly, you can have the level of encryption that is required. And we're talking about end-to-end encryption. Again, just getting a little techy there. So anyway, um, kind of got off on that tangent just talking about email. 
Uh, but anyway, understand HIPAA. I guess that's my whole point is that a lot of times we have um, some inf- misinformation about what HIPAA is, what is required, and um, in setting up our our systems and processes. You want it to be HIPAA secure. You want it to be HIPAA compliant. Um, but I think a lot of times we can make that much more complicated than it really needs to be. So one of the things that you've heard a lot from me about is G Suite. And I um, thought I'd explain a little more about G Suite and just thinking about setting up systems and processes, why I like using G Suite as a platform. Um, and also just, um, I want to kind of, I'm going to point you to here in the show notes and the show summary, there's a, a G Suite uh, hacks and tips um, information sheet or PDF that I put together. It's free. You can go to the website and get that. Um, and I'll have a link here in the show notes where you can download that or just some some ways to kind of automate things within G Suite. So I guess the place to start with G Suite is explain a little bit more about what G Suite is, um, because I think a lot of times people are confused by that. Um, if you have a Gmail account, you've got a Google account. And most of us, you know, people use different email, um, email um, you know, provider services like Gmail, Yahoo, um, Hotmail. Some people are still using that. The oldie but goodie or maybe not so good as AOL.com, but lots of different ways to do email. Um, but the one thing about Gmail, just the regular free account, is that you cannot make that, it is not HIPAA compliant. And the primary reason it is not HIPAA compliant, just using that alone for the tools of G Suite, and when I'm talking about the tools of G Suite or a Google account, I'm going to share a few more of those here in a minute. Um, the thing you've got to have in order for anything to be HIPAA compliant is you have to have a BAA, and that's just a business associate agreement. And essentially what that is is just a an agreement or a contract or whatever you want to um, say that you sign off with with a third party that has an agreement about how you're going to handle personal health information. So it's kind of like um, uh, the analogy I like to use is, is if I have, say I had a client folder, just a paper folder, and uh, were to uh, put their records in there, and I'm going to do a good job of scrambling up the records on the inside of that folder so that um, – you know, through encryption so that somebody if somebody opened the folder only the right people could read what was in there um, that's one level of being HIPAA compliant but if I go took that folder and I walked out uh, and this is how the internet works is that um, you type something out on your computer and it sends it to another computer um, via the internet through the magic of electronics and all that sort of thing. And so it'd be kind of like me taking a paper folder and walking out of my office and going out on the sidewalk and waiting for somebody to come by. And I'll say, what direction are you going in? And they tell me, I said, okay, good. That's the direction this folder needs to go. Do you mind taking it to the next person going in that direction? And so that's how the Internet works. I know that's a simplistic way of explaining it, but it's just a communication between lots of different computers and servers and that sort of thing. So with HIPAA, with HIPAA and the BAA is that if I hand my information to another person or another third party, I've got to have an agreement with them about how they're going to handle that. And so I need to be able to say to that person, okay, I'm going to hand you this folder, but I'm real, I don't want you to read any of the information. And I want to make sure that you're keeping this, this folder secure and that you're not letting anybody else have this information other than the people that have, are intended to receive it. So that that's a simple ex- explanation for what a BAA is. And so HIPAA, re- HIPAA requires that you have a BAA uh, for any third-party application that you might be using. So that would include like your email, like your phones, like your um, even re- your cloud storage, 
All of those kinds of things, you need to have a BAA or an agreement with them about how they're going to handle it and keep it secure. So um, with with G Suite, and G Suite, another way to think about G Suite is it is another Google account, and it is a, it is a paid Google account. And again, I'll have some uh, links here in the show notes so that you can go look at what a paid Google account is. Uh, full disclaimer and full transparency here, it is an affiliate link. So if you use that link to purchase a G Suite account, I do get a small commission at no cost to you. So I just want to be transparent about that. So, but anyway, with G Suite, there are several different levels that you can get. There's a basic level. Uh, which is, uh, I think, at currently the, when I'm recording this podcast, is six dollars a month. There is also a business level, which is twelve dollars a month per user. Now, let me clarify on that. And then the third level is like an enterprise level. I don't know of anybody that's ever used that. It's like seventy-five dollars a month. But um, anyway, the main difference between the basic and the business is the amount of storage that you get. Um, The thing is, with both of those, either the basic or the business, you can get the BAA from Google. So um, depending on how much... um, how much storage you think you're going to need, I would recommend that. The 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 business, I think the the best value though there is the business um, uh, account. Um, so the the other thing about having signing up for G Suite is that when you do that, you will you be able to use your own domain name. So uh, like with my practice, I'm kingsportcounseling.com is my website URL. When I signed up for um, G Suite, I use that now as my email extension. So all of my emails are at kingsportcounseling.com. And then the other thing too, another little hack here with that is that within a Google account, if you own other domain names, so like for me, I've got practiceoftherapy.com, um, I can fit that in under that Google account. So if you email me at uh, Practice of Therapy, it's just Gordon at practiceoftherapy.com. All of that is done within G Suite. And on my computer and on my phone and all of that sort of thing, all of that is just handled through the, the Gmail app. And so it's just like using the free version of Gmail, but it's just got that extension on it when we email back and forth. And it's HIPAA compliant or HIPAA secure uh, by using it that way. So um, that's the advantage of using G Suite. Now, here's the other thing about G Suite and why I like it so much is that it is so versatile that you can create all kinds of cool things with it. Um the different applications that you have with a Google account, the big one being Google Drive, which is the cloud storage. Um, And cloud storage, um, I know there may be some people that don't understand this, but let me explain it to you. Cloud storage is much better to use and also much more secure than actually storing stuff on your computer. And the reason why is is that if you're storing stuff on your computer, there is always the potential for somebody to hack into it or for you to lose your computer or for your computer to crash or any of those number of things. But if it's stored in the cloud, um, you're going to have um, always have access to it if you've got an Internet connection and you're always going to have a backup. And so it's more secure in that sense. And plus, particularly with Google, there their security is going to be better than anything that you could put on your computer. So um, they, they depend on it for their business. So that's why I like, um, I like using Google G Suite for that, for the, the cloud storage. So um, there's Google Drive, which is your cloud storage. You've got the other things that most people are pretty familiar with if they've used Google at all. Um, for example, Google Docs, Google Sheets. Um, the one tool in Google that I think is really kind of the biggest gold nugget for private practice owners is Google Forms, because you can create so many different types of forms 
that you can use for clients, that you can use for setting up a dashboard. And what I mean by dashboard typically is just a way of tracking things. Again, a system or process that you use for tracking data. So like tracking the number of uh, sessions you have in a week or tracking what your average per session rate is. You know, all of those things that are important for us to track and monitor in our practices. You know, a dashboard could be simply done on a on a Google sheet. But the thing about a Google form is that with a Google form, when you create a Google form, um, it automatically puts the information that you that you collect on that Google form into a Google sheet. So the power there is that you can manipulate a lot of data with that. And so um, anyway, there, there's there's too much to go into of the details of all of how that works or how you can use it for your practice in this particular podcast. But just want to make you aware that those are, if you think about it and get creative, there's lots of different ways that you can set up systems and processes using Google G Suite. Another another um, application that you might want to be thinking about for your practice, and a lot of us are do do this, um, is we have a dedicated electronic health record system. Now, um, the one that I you know that I recommend, and you know they are gracious sponsors of this podcast is therapy notes. And um, again, you've heard at the intro and the outro, just how, how to get to therapy notes at therapynotes.com. But they are specifically for mental health providers. And they, again, it's a HIPAA secure, HIPAA compliant platform that handles really all of the clinical side of your practice, uh, particularly things like um, if you are insurance based, an electronic health record system like Therapy Notes is, in my opinion, the way to go because that way you can file all of your your claims electronically. You don't. Um, it, it just makes everything much more automated by using a tool like that. G Suite doesn't do that, obviously, because it's not. It's not designed to do that. The thing about G Suite that to me is is neat is that you can kind of custom design your own pri- uh, processes and s- systems and processes using G Suite. Um, whereas Therapy Notes is much more uh, specifically um, specifically intended in terms of how it's used and what you use it for. In my practice, I use them both. I use G Suite um, and I use uh, Therapy Notes in conjunction with each other. They're not linked necessarily in terms of electronically, but like uh, with the Session Note Helper system that I put together in G Suite, what I do is I create my own kind of custom session notes or progress notes, and then I'm able to copy and paste that information into therapy notes where it's stored um, stored securely. It's it's also stored securely in my Google Drive, but I don't um, necessarily not always you know duplicate that because I know that therapy notes is keeping all those records specific to that particular client or particular patient in just one place that's easy to get to. So, um, yeah, so think about electronic health record systems. Um, Another great resource in learning about electronic health record systems is my friend Rob Reinhart, and he's got one of the best reviews of any. And again, I'll have um, links here in the show summary and show notes for for Rob's resources on just his review of electronic health record systems. Um, again, I'm, I'm a, I'm a proponent of therapy notes. It's who I use in my, my practice and, uh, I'm very pleased with them and they're constantly, uh, updating things and their support is just excellent in terms of getting uh, a response from them. If you ever have any problem they're they're right on it for you. So really the point of having systems and processes in place is that you really want to be able to get to a place in your practice when you have all of those things that are done on a regular basis or really just uh, things that are done day in and day out, automated as much as possible. Um, You know, otherwise you're going to end up just, you know, burning yourself out 
uh, of not really spending your time in a great way. So being able to set up a system and process or systems and processes for how you handle the administrative functions of your practice uh, is just an important piece to to take into consideration and to work on and to con- constantly, constantly tweak. The other side of, um, you know, I've mentioned uh, some things about the clinical side of private practice, and then there's the administrative side of private practice. Um, and what I think about there is just the, um, the running of a business in terms of having those things in place of knowing how to track what you bring in um, in terms of fees and what people pay you, tracking your income, and then also tracking your expenses. Uh, because at the end of the year, uh, guess what? You get to file tax returns and you've got to have records for all of those things. And um, and also it just makes your your business much more sound to have those processes in place. So, um, you know, again, a simple way to kind of track those things is to set up a Google Sheet or a Google form that creates the Google Sheet um, that tracks those kinds of things. So, you know, how much you receive each day from client sessions, uh, you know, what you pay out for your your operating expenses like your rent and your um, your phones and all of those things. Um, you want to have a way to track all of that and have an accounting and bookkeeping system in place. Again, a simple way is just setting up a spreadsheet that does does, does those things. Um, most electronic health record systems do track the, the money that you collect from clients and insurance uh, companies, but it doesn't necessarily have a function in there for tracking business expenses and that sort of thing. Um, I also use QuickBooks in my practice, and QuickBooks is the gold standard for um, for accounting and bookkeeping. Uh, most accountants will recommend that to people. There are some others. There's FreshBooks. There's uh, another one that I'm drawing a blank on. Uh, but anyway, there, there are a lot of different accounting and bookkeeping systems out there. I like QuickBooks just because it's got... Uh, a lot of features that are just really good and you can really kind of customize it. One thing I will say about QuickBooks and your accounting system though, and this is something that maybe I made a little bit of a mistake uh, around initially, is that QuickBooks is not HIPAA secure and most of your accounting softwares are not going to meet HIPAA standards uh, for protecting uh, client information. So the the workaround with that is, is you just do not put any personal health information or any specific client-related information into those systems. Um, you just treat them as just... Um, so, for example, if I receive a payment from a client uh, in QuickBooks, I just record that as simply as client payment. And that's it. There's not a name associated or anything like that. I just know that when I look in QuickBooks that I received a payment from a client for their serv- for their services. Whereas in your electronic health record system, like Therapy Notes, or if you set up something similar in uh, uh, G Suite, is that you're going to have... Um, something specific to that client. And that's the part that you want to keep HIPAA secure and have that personal health information, um, you know, protected in that way. So, um, so setting up things on the administrative side and the clinical side are going to be different in terms of your systems and processes. The clinical side is going to contain personal health information is going to contain client records, all of that sort of thing got to have a different level of security there, Uh, whereas on the uh, administrative side, you don't have to worry about that part of it as much, but you do need to be able to track things and know where the money is coming in and going out and all of that sort of thing. Also, just on the administrative side, um, you know, things like your marketing plan, uh, you know, your business plans, all of those kinds of things, just around the business side of a practice is all important to have. The other thing that I will um, 
say here just to kind of wrap things up for us is when you think about setting up your um, systems and processes, I think it's good idea to keep kind of ROI in the back of your mind, return on investment. Um, the systems that you set up are the tools to, to many degrees are the tools of your trade. And so you want to be able to invest in the right tools that are a good fit for what you do. Um, you know, I think about, you know, somebody that was um, uh, maybe a, somebody that's an electrician isn't going to go out and buy a bunch of plumbing tools for their, for their business. So uh, again, research it for yourself and understand what you're getting with that. Um, the one thing about um, G Suite, again, that I like to mention is, is that there's so much versatility with that um, in terms of you could set up, you know, and, and there are a lot of people that do this as they set up their whole uh, records keeping, um, both the clinical and administrative side, just in G Suite. It doesn't work so well for people that are insurance based because you don't have those file claiming abilities. But there are several lots of people that I've I'm aware of. In fact, last week's um, uh, guest Eddie Ed Dara um, talked about how he said it uses G Suite for his practice, um, and he doesn't use uh, a specific electronic health record system. Uh, again, he's a uh, He's a out of pocket or a cash pay practice, so he's not worried. You know, he doesn't have to worry about filing insurance claims, so he can do that within that context. But um, again, know know what tools you need, uh, know what you what your processes are, and figure out ways to automate that as much as possible. So another example, real quickly, of of the uh, a way to automate things is like. If you um, if you're emailing people intake packets before they come in for their first session, um, you can set up an email template so that you're not typing the same template out every single time within G Suite or within Gmail. Yeah, there's a a function there. And again, uh, on that Google hacks and tips sheet that I've got available I go through the steps of how you set that up, just a template within Gmail uh, to be able to have automated, automated email me messages or uh, just a few clicks, it writes the email for you and you don't have to spend a lot of time typing. So those are the kinds of things I'm thinking about. The other thing too, just with thinking about your ROI, I know a lot of times people will shy away from maybe using an electronic health record system like Therapy Notes because they think it's more uh, they're going to be saving money in some way by doing it all themselves. But one of the things about that is you've got to also look at your time investment as well. And uh, if you will be sure and just kind of understand for yourself that your time is valuable. Um, the time that you spend with clients is worth something. And so if you're spending your time on a lot of administrative functions, um, the the monthly fee that you pay for something is going to be well worth uh, the return on the investment because you'll be able to see more clients using that time versus doing administrative functions that don't necessarily make you any money. So that's a way to kind of think around the money mindset of looking at the cost of different things. Um, you know, what I spend on therapy notes, what I spend on my G Suite um, uh, subscription, even what I spend with my friends at Practice Solutions for doing the helping us with the insurance claims and and the insurance billing is well worth the return on the investment of that because I end up getting more in the long run by doing it that way. Even though I'm spending money out for those things, it gets I get the money back so to speak and in the long run. So that's a, that's a way to think about that is just thinking about what you're investing your time and money into and just thinking around setting up your different systems and processes within your practice. Well, 
Well, folks, I hope that's giving you some things to think about and hopefully a little bit more knowledge or hopefully, um, you know, I, I hope that the information is something um, maybe for some of you new. May I realize that for some other folks, it's stuff you might already know. But anyway, um, if you want to get the Google hacks, tips and hacks sheet, hacks and tip sheet, forget how I titled that, you can definitely get that by going to the show notes here and there's a be a link to that. Um, and you could probably Google it as well. Just type in uh, practice of therapy hacks and tips for G Suite um, and get that free download. Um, and again, there's links here in the show notes for that. Also, be sure and check out the course G Suite for Therapists. Um, got that available if you really want to do a really deep dive into G Suite. And uh, there's a there is uh, also I meant I know I mentioned HIPAA earlier. There is a a whole lesson in there about HIPAA, where again I go into more of a deeper dive around HIPAA and better understanding that and uh, setting G Suite up so that it is HIPAA secure, HIPAA compliant. Um, the other thing I'd love for you to do is check out our sponsor for the podcast, and that is Therapy Notes. TherapyNotes.com. They're who I use in my practice for. Um, my electronic health record system and filing insurance claims and all of that great stuff. Um, they are the number one electronic health record system for therapists and it's specifically for mental health providers. So it's our, it's a wonderful tool. Um, and you can use G suite with that like I do. So, um, what, and, and I think, uh, um, that is, it's just a, it's it's a wonderful product, and I'm really uh, grateful to them for sponsoring the podcast. Um, then you can get to them at therapynotes.com. And uh, just before I forget to mention it, uh, use the coupon code Gordon, just G O R D O N, and that will get you um, two months free of their services. And the G Suite Therapist course, um, again, speaking of coupons, if you'll use the coupon code June 2020, that'll get you 20% off of that course. So check out those two things for sure. So, um, I do hope you're having a, a good summer. Uh, it's a weird one. It's uh, strange times we're in, and I know in different parts of the country, different parts of the world, people are being affected um, much harder than I have been or we have been here in um, in our area. We've been fortunate that there's been very few cases here in northeast Tennessee, um, and we're just kind of an isolated area up here. And I hope that trend continues for us here, but keeping an eye and ear out for it. Um, wear your mask, wash your hands, all those kinds of things. Just be mindful of others and the needs of others. I think that's always an important thing to to kind of keep in mind. So anyway, take care, folks. I'm glad you joined me for the podcast. Do take time to subscribe to the podcast, wherever you might be listening to it. Um, and uh, we'll be talking with you again uh, here next week or in the future. You have been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer. Please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information, resources, and tools to help you in starting, building, and growing your private practice. And if you haven't done so already, please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com. The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that. <laughs>